Hey traders, Jason here from Lever Brothers. Greetings from Costa Rica. I've been here for the last month and I'll be here for another couple weeks. Um, that's why I haven't done any videos over the last month. Uh, but I wanted to get this one out to you because um, I see some important developments happening. Um, my sound here probably isn't very good because I don't have my normal setup that I have at home. But nonetheless, content here should be good. Um, so I want to do a quick state of the market um, video. Um, stuff developing beneath the surface that I want you to be aware of. Um, so I'll try to make this kind of quick. Um, this is kind of what I'm seeing right now. Um, so here is the Russell 2000, incredibly strong, okay? Big rally September through January, flat trading for a couple of months, breaks out, runs up to a new high. It's, now it's forming a little cup and handle pattern. If this was a stock, which I guess you can say it is a stock because there is an ETF, you'd be buying dips within this pattern You'd be playing breakouts. If if this is the if, if this is representative of the market, the market is incredibly strong. It's trending up. Everything's looking really really good. Um, you can even draw a trend line, like here, or even just here. And you could just say like every dip within this pattern is viable, um, with a stop, and then you can add to it on the breakout and just continue to the trend up. So this 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 chart looks fantastic. Um, charts don't get better than this. Here is the S&P 500, a little bit of a different story. Obviously, if I backed it up till the beginning of like 2016, we'd have a big uptrend, and then this would be considered a six-month consolidation pattern. Because I'm zooming it in since October, it looks a lot less good. Um, you know, big run-up in the end of last year, but for the, you know this year, for the most of the year, it's traded just sideways, up, down, up, down. It hasn't really gotten any legs going anywhere. I lean to the upside right now, uh, mostly because the 50-day is pointing up. And we have a successful test here and a kind of a successful test here. But you know what? We made a new high here and it didn't get any follow through. So overall, I consider it more neutral. The combination of this chart and the last chart tells us what, a, what kind of a stock picker's market this is. Okay, some, some companies are doing incredibly well. Some are just very eh. So if you're uh, picking the wrong stocks, then you're, you're probably just doing so-so. You know, you might even be flat on the year. If you're in the right stocks at the right time, you could have, you could be having a monster year. It all depends. I mean, it's, it's a very divided market, um, with some stuff doing great, some stuff not doing great. Uh, you know, and that's just the way it is. This is the ultimate stock pickers market. All right. So let's look at a couple of indicators that are, that are kind of concerning me in the near term. Okay, so here is up top is the SP 500 and down below is the new highs at the NYSE. So I want to point out the difference in character of the new highs based on the different types of markets we have. So last, um, obviously last year we had a big rally up and notice where the new highs were. Most of the new highs kind of sat, whoops, I got to change this. Most of the new highs sat in this box up here. Okay, so they were they, they, they sat at an elevated level. Okay, most of the day-to-day -day prints sat in this box, and the 10-day moving average of the new highs sat in this box. Now, if you compare it to what we're doing today, we all the new highs are sitting down here. Okay, so if you if you take all these annotations off the new high chart, it's kind of hard to read. But if you if I deleted the indicator and all you saw was this box in this box. Um, the only conclusion you can come to is, hey, the market was really healthy over here and it's not doing that great over here. So anyone who says they're 100% all in, bullish, the market's going up, 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 um, I don't see the support there. Okay, I just don't. Um, the trend over the last like six weeks is down. You could see the prints of individual, or the individual days are down and the 10 day moving average is down. Okay, it's not doing bad. Okay, I don't think there's anything to be concerned about overall, but in a very near-term basis, it's there's there's obviously a, a, a different market going on compared to what it was last year. Okay, it's something to be aware of. Okay, if we're wondering, hey, why why isn't the S&P like you know going up to a new high? This is why. Okay, for six months we've had a lack of new highs, and the market's not going to just go up to new highs and go up to three thousand uh, without more new highs. Let's look at another one. So here's a similar concept, different indicator. Up top is the S&P 500. Down below is the percentage of S&P stocks above their 200-day moving average. Okay, same thing as what I just looked at. When the market was very strong last year, okay, it was strong, you know, April, May, June, July, then it hit an inflection point and got even stronger. New highs, not new highs, but percentage of S&P stocks above the 200-day moving average printed up here. Okay, basically 70% and above. It's like high 60% and above. 
Nowadays, for the last six months, it's been down here. Okay, if, if, we, if I just cross this out, if I said you can't look at this chart at all, you have to make all your decisions based on what you see down here, you probably wouldn't, you'd either be, you, you probably wouldn't be very long in the market, okay? You might be in, but you're not, you might not be in, you know, all in, okay? If, if there's this few stocks, it's not few, it's still above 50%, if there's this many less stocks trading above their 200 day moving average as compared to last year, then obviously something's going on. There's like the participation rate is not very good. Um, whatever's happening, it's just, it's not that great of a market. Like some, some individual stocks might be doing great, but like overall the market's not doing that, doing that great. So it's something to keep in mind as we persist and as, you know, some people are like bearish, they're always bearish, but some people are like off the hook, they're like bullish on everything. You know what? If for me to really be extremely bullish, I need improvement here, okay? I need improvement down here. Okay, I need more stocks to be trading above their 200 day moving average or else I just don't think this stock's gonna just, I don't think the market's just gonna take off and leg up again or leg up that much further. Okay, zooming in a little bit, here's the SP 500 um, with the percentage of stocks above their 50 day moving average. Okay, great improvement. Okay, again, I'm trying to zoom in here, um, but obviously there's a divergence going on like right now. The S&P made a higher high here but just recently the percentage of SP stocks put in a lower high here, okay? So when the S&P was traded up to like almost 2,800, you had like 75% of stocks above their 50 day moving average. When the S&P legged up over 2,800, you had even less, you had only 70% of stocks. So less stocks got pulled up on this uh, on this most recent run up. Okay, the market could, go, could do it again. It could leg up again, it could make a higher high, go up to 2,850, that's fine. But unless we get, you know, unless we unless the highs here get matched, it's not going to just take off. Okay. Again, as I said up top, we have a stock pickers market. If you're in the right stocks, you're doing really well. But if you're in the wrong stocks, they're going nowhere. Okay. Zooming in even further. Okay. Here is the S&P 500 um, in black, and the green line is the percentage of S&P stocks at a 20-day high. You can see most of the time that the two curves are pretty are, are pretty uh, are pretty closely correlated. You can see right here the S&P moved up, the percentage of stocks at a 20-day high also moved up. Same thing here, same thing here. But we have a divergence right now. S&P made a higher high, percentage of stocks above their, at a 20-day high didn't even come close. Okay, in fact, right now it's sitting right at the, at the at the average right here. Okay, so. The, the support just isn't there for the market to just suddenly hit an inflection point and take off. Okay, the market breadth isn't bad. is isn't that good. Okay, this does it, this is not a long term analysis. This is just short term. Like looking out over the next couple weeks, the support just isn't there for the market to just take off and, and go. Okay, same concept with the with the Nasdaq. Okay, just recently Nas puts in a higher high percentage of NAS, this is not NAS, this is NAS 100, percentage of NASDAQ 100 stocks putting in a 20 day high, um, put in a lower, you know, put in a lower high. Okay, so this kind of a divergence is going to pull the market down. Okay, the market isn't going to just keep going up with this taking place. Okay, I know Amazon and Apple, they're doing fine. Uh, Netflix has come down, but Google is at near a new high. I know some of these bigger stocks can pull the market up in the short term for a period of time. But you know what? It's not going to last. Okay, unless you have better participation in the near term, it's not going to last. It's going to um, the market's going to get pulled down. Doesn't mean it's going to you know. It doesn't mean the uptrend's over. Doesn't mean we're going to crash. It just means that in the next over the next couple of weeks, the market's probably not going to move up too much. Last chart. Okay, this is the up top is the advanced decline line of the Nasdaq. Down below is the advanced decline line of the NYSE. Both doing incredibly well. Okay, higher highs, higher lows across the board. Near the, they're both near their highs. So I want to be really clear um, that overall, I think the market is in really good shape. I think it continues to move up. I continue to think 2018 will be a good year. I do think eventually the S&P 500 will will break out and go above 30 above 3,000. I think the market overall is very healthy. But in the very near term, looking out a week, looking out two weeks, some of these breath indicators just don't support further gains, okay? So that's all I got for now. Hope you're having a good summer. Um, as we move into earnings season, the combination of a lack of these, you know, market breath um, along with earnings season maybe tone things down a little bit. Maybe 
you know, don't be so aggressive, okay? Conserve some of your mental energy, conserve some of your capital for, who knows, maybe we get in, maybe we get some, a little bit of weakness in the near term and then we get a big rally um, later on this fall. I don't know what's gonna happen, but in the near term, I think it's best to tone things down. All right, again, thanks for listening. Um, and I'll, I'll see you again in a couple weeks when I get back to the States.